Good evening, I'm Patricia Vallone with a CTV News update. For the second time in 13 months, the U.S. House of Representatives is on track to impeach President Trump. The hearings got underway this morning. They come in the wake of an attempted coup at the U.S. Capitol one week ago today. The resolution on the floor includes a single article, Incitement of Insurrection. It reads in part that the president threatened the integrity of the democratic system. As expected, Republicans accuse Democrats of rushing to judgment and attempting to divide the country. Here is some of that debate. The president of the United States is an insurrectionist. He led an insurrection against the United States of America. Right now, our focus should be on healing, healing our nation. With so many upset and dismayed at the actions of last week, it's our responsibility to chart a path forward, to subdue the growing animosity and find ways to heal our country. Unfortunately, I don't believe this resolution will achieve those goals, especially seven days ahead of the inauguration. Trump basically attempted to overthrow the government, to violently overthrow the first branch of government, this Congress. America, we did stop the steal. We stopped Donald Trump from stealing our democracy and imposing himself as a tyrant. It's unclear how quickly House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will transmit the resolution, which is expected to pass, onto the Senate. The Senate is not scheduled to meet until the day before Biden's inauguration. Today marks the start of the 442nd Maryland General Assembly session and what's expected to be anything but business as usual. The pandemic has forced legislative leaders to enact tough social distancing guidelines in normally crowded chambers and to hold virtual committee meetings. This morning, Prince George's County Executive Angela Osserbrook spoke with reporters about the county's legislative agenda this session. And she says that her top priorities are both health equity and school construction, as well as pandemic relief. Meantime, the county executive spoke out today about the Prince George's police officer who was suspended yesterday. The unnamed officer was wearing a Trump campaign t-shirt while flashing his police badge and gun in a social media post. Although the suspension comes on the heels of last week's attack at the Capitol, also, Brooks says it's not about regulating politics or First Amendment rights, but whether the officer violated department policy. Police internal affairs say an investigation was opened after learning of the photo. A second social media post was then discovered that caused even more concern. The department's social media policy was updated in December 2019, just prior to the pandemic outbreak. And another officer is in hot water following their alleged involvement in the domestic terrorist attack last week. A corrections officer from the Charles County, is, Charles County is currently under investigation. Authorities are working to determine the nature of the individual's participation in the riots and if any policies were violated. Officials say they don't believe other employees were involved. Governor Larry Hogan announced he is scheduled for outpatient surgery to remove more cancerous cells on his face and shoulder. Hogan made the announcement this morning just prior to the start of the legislative session. The basal and squamous cell carcinoma is in the early stages, according to a tweet from his office. The governor has been treated for this type of skin cancer in the past. He was also diagnosed and treated for non-Hodgkin lymphoma in 2015 only five months into his first term. Later that year, he announced he was in remission after months of chemotherapy. Governor Hogan announces several new appointments today, including two in Prince George's County. Delegate Michael Jackson will replace former Senate President Mike Miller in his District 27 seat. Miller recently resigned due to ongoing health concerns. No word yet as to who will replace Jackson in the House. Judge Brian Beriano was also appointed to the Prince George's District Court, and Dennis Schrader was nominated for Secretary of the Maryland Department of Health. Well, here are the latest COVID-19 numbers. More than 2,500 Marylanders have tested positive for the disease over the past 24 hours. 37 people have died. The state's positivity rate remains relatively high at 8.53%. Prince George's continues to see the highest number of people infected with the disease since the beginning of the pandemic. That number stands at nearly 61,000 people. 
And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. We'll be back with more in just a moment. For the latest information on COVID-19 in Maryland, visit the State Health Department website. That's health.maryland.gov. Again, health.maryland.gov. Click the link to the COVID-19 information portal. There you'll find all the latest information about coronavirus. You'll find daily updates on cases and fatalities. Answers to questions about testing and the governor's stay-at-home order are available as well. For specific information about Prince George's, visit PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. That's PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. The site offers information about local services for residents and businesses. There's a link for COVID-19 relief donations. Also, food pantry locations are listed. And if you have any questions, call the county COVID-19 hotline at 301-883-6627. That's 301-883-6627. I moved to Florida with literally pennies in my pocket and a prayer. I needed a new start. Dacian looks like a very typical three-year-old until you ask him, what's your name? How old are you? My son has a lot of behaviors that would show as being autistic. Most kids can tolerate a variety of foods, but unfortunately for Dacian, everything has to be organic and raw. I wasn't ashamed to go to the food pantries. It's expensive to eat healthy, and nutrition is very important to Dacian's health. The healthy organic food that we receive dramatically helped his social skills. Most people would say, she really doesn't have much of a life, but to me, I have everything right there next to me and my son. Maryland State Police identify the victim in a fatal two-vehicle crash in Lanham late last night. The victim is 47-year-old Carlos Chavez. According to officials, Chavez was traveling eastbound on Route 5, or Route 50, rather, when his vehicle left the roadway. That's when he struck a tractor trailer that was parked on the shoulder. He was pronounced dead on the scene. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. School advocates are pushing lawmakers to override the governor's veto of a massive billion-dollar education reform bill. The bill, known as the Blueprint for Maryland's Future, was passed last year by the General Assembly. However, Hogan vetoed the measure over the summer. Today, members and supporters of the Maryland State Education Association and Strong Schools Maryland met in Annapolis to continue their push for higher funding. Marylanders across the state still support additional funding directed towards public education. And I think now more than ever, our legislators and, and, and Maryland families and communities see the need to put into our public schools what our students deserve if we're gonna to continue to build our economy and, and graduate top-notch students to take on the jobs of the future. Bose says the group will also focus on getting COVID recovery funds for schools across the state. A U.S. district judge in Washington is delaying the execution of a federal inmate from Maryland. The inmate, 48-year-old Dustin Higgs, who lived in Laurel, has tested positive for COVID-19. That according to the Baltimore Sun. His lawyers argue that lung damage due to the coronavirus would increase his risk of painful edema if he is given a lethal injection. Higgs was convicted in 1996 for murdering three women in Prince George's County. Meantime, federal prosecutors have petitioned the Supreme Court to go forward with Higgs' execution. The U.S. Army names a former Bowie High School student as Soldier of the Year in its 2020 Best Warrior competition. Sergeant James Akinola, who represented the U.S. Army Medical Command and is stationed in South Carolina, received top honors in the Army competition. 22 soldiers from 11 Army commands completed a series of activities to test their wisdom, tactical skills, and combat readiness. Akinola says it's an honor to receive the award. Just since I started this journey and started my career, I've always wanted to progress and show my leaders that, you know, that I'm the best, you know, I'm the best out there. So I've done things to put myself out there by volunteering for, you know, this detail or that detail volunteering for the Soldier of the Month, and then that pretty much brought me to where I am today, just continue to compete, continue to push myself, and having those leaders 
um, there to push me and motivate me and direct me. Akinola graduated from Bowie High in 2009. Publishing her first book at 16 years old, a Clinton author is taking the world by storm. Meet Jayana Wood. Wood published her first novel in December. It's called Dawn of a New Day, which is about a 20-year-old who tragically loses her parents in a home invasion. Wood says she's sold hundreds of copies of her book so far, and after a year of writing, she says it's surreal to be finished. I still can't believe I finally have my first novel. You know, it's you know, you put in the work, you sit down, it, you know, you go through the ups and downs, you know, you go through the moments where you want to quit. But when you finally see that have the book in your hands and you're feeling like, wow, this is my work. I, I've accomplished a goal I wanted to accomplish for so long now. So I'm just I'm really excited. And Wood wants her story to be a series of at least five or seven books. Well, let's get a quick check now on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 29. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 52, a low of 32. Friday, mostly cloudy with a chance of showers in the evening. Daytime temps will reach a high near 50 and a low of 35. And Saturday, partly sunny with a high near 46 and a low around 31. Now for your community calendar, calling all students, parents, and educators. The Prince George's County Alumni Chapter Delta Sigma Theta Sorority is hosting a virtual HBCU experience. Meet with representatives from schools across the nation, learn about scholarship opportunities, and much more. Register now. The free event is January 23rd from 12 in the afternoon until 3. For more information, send an email or search for it on Eventbrite. And that wraps up our newscast. Thanks for watching. Join us again tomorrow. Have a great night. I am what child hunger looks like in America. I am a nine-year-old boy who hopes a friend invites me to a sleepover so I can have dinner. I am a 15-year-old girl who goes for walks during lunch so my friends won't know I don't have anything to eat. I am a 13-year-old boy who gets into fights at school just because I'm hungry. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in seven American children who struggle with hunger. Kids you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him. Like, He's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table, too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. Can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him, too. When I adopted Turtle, I discovered all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly, he's all pure love. The coronavirus has affected the African-American community in many ways, including a drastic drop in blood donations. This is the time to take care of one another, and blood transfusions from healthy African-American donors can be a life-saving treatment for patients with sickle cell disease or cancer. The American Red Cross adheres to the highest standards of safety and infection control and urges you to come out to donate. Please, make an appointment today at redcrossblood.org.